Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Bay Area Content Marketing Meetup. I'm Dennis, the organizer. Today, we're going to be talking about competitive intelligence. We have with us Andreas Mueller, for, uh, Chief Strategist at Blue Fusion. Andreas is going to tell us about a new uh, secret approach to competitive intelligence. I think he's going to do some uh, potentially some demos for us as well. Andreas, thank you for joining us and take it away. Wow, thank, thank you very much. It's uh, great to be here. Everybody, everybody can hear me. Very nice. Yep, we can hear you. Yeah, this is this is this is fantastic. Um, so what yeah, what, what I'd like to do is I'm going to be sharing some slides. I don't want to make it boring or anything, but it's, it's, it's just nice to have some slides of a little structure. And then I'll be going back and forth just so you can kind of see how to how to use those tools in practice. And I think it just makes makes things a little more more exciting. So let me just go ahead. I'm going to start to share my screen. I'll share my desktop here and zip over. Okay. You, you guys seen the presentation? Yeah, we can see your title slide. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's this this presentation uh, will be about uh, digital uh, competitive intelligence. So it's CI or competitive intelligence on the digital side. And it ties in really nicely with, with content as well. So some of the, uh, the points I'll be covering is, uh, and this, this, this comes up a lot for us as well as we're, um, uh, as we're kind of talking to clients. Uh, we see that your digital competitor might be very, very different from your regular perceived competitor, like the people you might see at, at actual trade shows. Um, then I'll, I'll go into a couple of digital tools. I'll, I'll focus on a very specific one that's uh, near and dear to me um, and uh, kind of show how to tie that in with a, with a content strategy because that's why a lot of us are here. So who am I? Um, I? I was born in Germany. I spent two years in France. I spent a year in Japan. I love languages. I have a degree in French literature. Uh, theater of the 20th century. Um, and, and for me, it all, it all kind of makes sense because at the base, so, so my company does uh, digital marketing and I started that in, in, in 2001. And it all kind of makes sense because to me, marketing is really communication. And marketing, if you, if you do marketing right, it's speaking the language. It's first of all, understanding, just being aware that there's a language that you're clients speak that is probably different from yours and and then trying to understand that language maybe emulating it and and just speaking on the same terms or speaking the same language as your as your clients or your prospects speak uh and so that that's why competitive intelligence makes a lot of sense and uh in terms of uh in terms of my company it's called blue fusion um, it's, I mean, basically we've been doing competitive intelligence, digital marketing since 2001. And, um, uh, again, it's one of those, one of those cultural things. I met a German guy in Silicon Valley. Uh, I, I'm, I'm based in, in the Santa Cruz area and we really hit it off. And so we started this company, he moved back to Germany. So now, now we have a company in the U S and a company in Germany, and we're doing kind of the standard, you know, digital marketing stuff. But to me, What's, what's really interesting is tying in um, competitive intelligence and on top of that content. So um, SEO or search engine optimization um, from, from, from my perspective really means content, writing the right kind of content. So, okay, let's, let's, let's look at digital competitive intelligence before we uh, dive into the tools. So this is what what does anybody, does anybody recognize that three was it 3.1415? Pi. Come on. Yep. You got it. You got it. Okay. So di digital intelligence, uh, it's basically, so the, the way, the, the way, the way I see it, digital marketing means your website needs to be the hub. And, and so if you're uh, just, just as an example, let's look at uh, SEO versus the paid side. So if you go, if you go to Google and you type in SEO, uh, you, you type in law firm software, Obviously, at the very top, um, you see the ads, tons of ads. It used to be that the ads were on the right, so it was really clear, right? You remember that? Any, any, anybody remember that? Where the ads were only on the right, right, exactly. And then they started kind of populating 
Then they, then they had ads on the right and a few of them, like one or two on top. And now it's just pushes, it's just pushing everything down. But if you type in law firm software, you see, you know, all these, all these ads that, that companies pay for. And then below here, you see the top 10 um, organic results. So that's, that, that's kind of, that's kind of the difference between SEO and uh, pay, pay per click, the paid site or paid search or SEM um, as, as, as it's often called. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, so, so let, me, let, me just, let me just kind of be clear here. A lot of people malign the paid side because they say, you know, who would ever click on that? But a lot of, but many, many prospects do click on the paid side. So it is, it is worth um, engaging in that. So Google is, I, I, really, I really like Google because you can take advantage of a lot of what they're doing. I mean, they're not as pure as they like to, uh, think they are, um, but often they will kind of let you kind of dive in into their technology and take advantage. Sometimes the problem is they'll often open something up to you. Um, however, then they'll kind of pull things back because they'll 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 decide okay we want to stop sharing or for whatever reason and then and then you're kind of stuck you know you're kind of stuck with this tool no longer existing. But some of the, the, the tools that have survived are like Google Alerts. I mean, it's a free tool. It works really well. Who's, who's used Google Alerts before? Yeah, it's, it's a fantastic tool because you, you, can, uh, you can look for changes. But you, you, you can look for a website. You can basically say, oh, on this, on this page, if this page ever changes, let me know, right? Or you can do a search and you can say, hey, if the search ever changes, let me know, and so you can you, you get an email whenever there is a, a a modification. And we'll kind of we'll kind of dive into that um, as well. So I, I love I love the the tech side. I love hacking, um, but I also love languages. So this is kind of uh, digital marketing is a really nice coming together of being really geeky and also uh, uh, you know kind of understanding the basics of marketing and understanding. Uh, uh, you know, different cultures, the cultures between you and your, your potential clients. So, uh, so let me, let me just kind of dive into the, what, what are called the advanced search operators of Google. Okay. So first there, there, there are two ways to access uh, the, these, these little nuggets of gold here. So you can just go to the search page. So the standard, you know, google.com search page, and then you go, to the very bottom, and if you guys, if you guys want to, you can just kind of play along. I know this is being recorded, so it's uh, another another way. Um, so if you go to settings, and uh, I got this, I got this thing. Here. Okay, and then you go to, then you click on advanced search, uh, and suddenly you see all these options uh, that facilitate some of these advanced search parameters. They just, they just make it a lot easier. So a lot of the stuff I'll be talking about today, you can go back to this page and you can kind of use it as a template, okay? So, the, you, you, can, so you can access it uh, via the search page or the command line. And I really like the command line because it's just so much simpler and so much cleaner. And here's, here's an example. So if you type, so I've just got ibm.com in here. And as you notice, I've typed site colon. Who's, has anybody used the site colon? command before? Okay, yeah, I, I just, oh my God. I, I honestly, I probably use that maybe three, four times a day because what that will give you, and, and here, you know, this is, th this, this is crazy because it's a huge site. So the way to use it is just type site colon, no space, really important. And then you type the URL of the site that you're looking at. And basically you're telling Google, hey, show me what you have indexed for this site, i.e. ibm.com. So the response is, hey, we've got about 7,230,000 pages indexed, and this is what they look like, okay? So then you're saying, okay, great. So what does that mean? Hey, so specifically, if you're looking at a competitor and you're trying to figure out what is their presence, and so you could translate as, as, as being, hey, what, you know, what, how much how much of the search engine result page do they dominate? You can see, oh, it's two thousand pages. It's fifty pages. It's wow, seven million pages. So you can you, you can get some 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 good questions answered here. 
So let me, let me kind of go back. So who is my digital competitor? So again, again, this question that, that a lot of companies get wrong because a digital competitor may be very different from a uh, kind of a perceived competitor. Um, and the way I see it is you're stuck in traffic, right? And all those cars in front of you are your competitors in a sense. So what that means is this is like the top 10 on Google. And if you type in uh, a keyword or a query that seems to reflect what you're doing, the ones before you, those, those are the ones who are your digital competitors and there's no way around. So it could be, you know, it could be Wikipedia, right? Is Wikipedia an issue? No, not really. Because if you're selling something, Wikipedia is informational. So you can say, okay, Wikipedia is number one, not a big deal. No, let's look at number two. Ah, okay. This is, a, you're seeing SAP maybe. Okay, so SAP is your, uh, is, is your actual uh, competitor. So it's not necessarily who you think it is. And so what I wanna do is just take uh, this company called Looker and I like them because they were acquired by Google. They're, they're actually in Santa Cruz. So it's kind of a pride and joy of us. They, they are a business intelligence. Let me just use them as an example, okay? Um, so looker.com, if you want more information on this company, uh, I mean, you could say, hey, it's my digital competitor. How do I find out something about them? You can go to external sources and external sources could be looking at uh, analysts such as Forrester. And I just got this information from a competitor who actually published uh, some information on here, enterprise BI, BI platform, so business intelligence, and uh, you know Looker. Looker actually appears on there uh, with Tibco, and so so that's that's one that's one way to go. But you can also qu query the Almighty SERP, which is the search engine results page. So very simple. You just go. Go to Google, type in business intelligence platform. Kind of remember that, that picture of the cars in front of you, right? So here you've got the ads. So let's just forget about the ads for now. So you just kind of go down. And down here you can see, okay, so these are the guys who are ranking well for business intelligence platform. So it's Tableau. Yeah, we all know Tableau. G2, oh, interesting. So this is kind of a comparison site. And Looker comes up number three. Okay, so that makes sense. That's, that's where you'd expect them to be. Right, but then you can also use oh I know, and I love this Google Auto Suggest, and Google Auto Suggest is so powerful um, because it's a separate database, and the way I recommend you use it is uh, and here in in this case let's just look at the company Looker, right, and so what I usually do is I type versus, and it helps to type a space because then you get a little more. Uh, information. And here's Google kind of spitting back uh, looker versus, and these are perceived competitors that Google is seeing. Because the, the, these are basically what, Go like if, if you were to interview Google or, or query Google, hey, who do you think is a competitor uh, of looker? These are the answers right here. So it's a little bit of a different database from, from, the, from the strict uh, search engine results page, but this is what Google would expect. So this is a great place to figure out that uh, Power BI, uh, SciSense, Mode, Domo, Periscope, you know, Click, all these guys are perceived as Looker competitors directly from uh, the, horse's, uh, the horse's mouth here. And so another, uh, so this, this is cool. This is where you wanna pay attention. Um, a, a tool I really, really love is called Answer the Public. And uh, it's just answerthepublic.com. And let me, let me just show you what you get here. So if I, if I were to type in um, business intelligence, let's just type in business intelligence platform, right? And just ignore that creepy guy that you see. Uh, this very cool software that's free for the initial searches. And then it, it'll, you know, it'll tell you, hey, you ran out of searches and you need to pay for the upgrade. But if you're smart, you can use a VPN to trick them. And then, so you just switch to a VPN in Germany and then you can use it again and switch to VP in England, then you can use it again. But what, what this gives you is these auto suggests in, in a beautiful, beautiful output format. 
So my search is business intelligence platform. I'm trying to look for uh, the, the Google auto suggests and it gives, it gives me a beautiful visualization, right? It gives me, um, it gives me uh, uh, prepositions. It gives me questions. And so the thing I love here is, uh, so let me, let me, so business intelligence platform is a little more limited. Eh, just go away here. Let me try, let me just go back and do business, just business intelligence. Uh, because it'll it'll give us a little more uh, detail and then it'll make a lot more sense. Wait, go away. It'll make a lot more sense when you tie it into content and content building for you guys. Because the thing I really like here, so we're looking, we're looking for business intelligence. So if I go down here, uh, here you've got 63 questions. Okay. Now there are what questions, there are why questions. So it could be why business intelligence tools are important. So let's imagine you're writing content, right? And you want to come up with a blog post or an article around business intelligence. This tool is fantastic because it'll, it'll uh, give you these questions. So you could actually create a beautiful FAQ out of these because the, you know, these are questions that people online are actually asking. <laughs> and then you can just continue. You've got prepositions, you've got uh, can, with, so business intelligence, with example. Okay, so people are looking for that. Okay, that's, you know, that, that's good to know. Good, uh, good piece of information. There are comparisons. So you've got and, you've got like, you've got, you've got versus. So business intelligence versus biz, business analyst. Okay, so people search for that. Hey, you know, you could, maybe you could write a little article on that. Um, so it, you kind of, so kind of tuck this away, kind of tuck this tool away next time you're writing content, because it's, 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 it's very, very helpful as I blast on here. And, and, uh, Dennis, you can tell me to, um, shut up anytime. Cause I've, I've a bunch of stuff and I want to, I, I really want to respect. Do we usually stop around like 30 minutes? Is that, is that, is that a good, uh, <clears throat> you can stop at 30 minutes if that's, if that's what you yeah, want, yeah, but yeah. can, a lot of okay. people will either drop off if they need to, but you can continue on until uh, like one o'clock Pacific if you want. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll stop you if any question, like relevant questions come in. Yes. Yes. Please but do. Keep, keep going. Okay. Good. Um, and so, um, why, so why is the digital footprint uh, so important? Because what I was saying before, if you um, look at, let's, let's look at Looker, for example, right? And so you figure out that Tableau, is, is a competitor. And so if you use the Google Advanced Search Operator command site for Tableau specifically, you can see, this is kind of like what we were seeing with, with the IBM query. You can see, oh my God, these guys, that's a huge site, you know? This is three quarters of a million pages. That, that's massive. So, so the first piece of information is um, this competitor that you're looking at Massive site. So, what? So, what do we do next? So, we got site, site tableau. Can't can't do a ton with that. Um, but if you dive into it, uh, you kind of get more of a picture because you're seeing. And let, let me just let me just kind of go go back to that go back to that link. So I'm in site tableau, and you can already see. Okay, there's a www.tableau.com, but then there's also usergroups.tableau.com. So it's a subdomain. So your understanding, and this is something that they don't necessarily want to share with you. So it's, it's, it's kind of a sneaky way into the back door and you can see how they have structured their, uh, their website, that they've got all these different subdomains. And so you can get a little tricky here uh, because as, as you're seeing, there's, oh, tc19.tableau.com, there's www.trust.whatever. You know, uh, you can deep into dig into this a little more deeper and you can filter things out. So you can do site colon tableau.com, you know, just like we were doing before. And then up here is a filter. You can just add, okay, so you see a TC19, which is there. It's like a, a, a conference. I think it's Tableau Conference 19. And so you see a bunch of those uh, and you can just remove, you can just remove those from the output. Um, 
And then you see, oh, there's a TC18 down here. And let me get, so you get, you're getting rid of www, you're getting rid of trust dot, the community dot tableau. And so let me just get rid of the TC18 as well, hit enter. And now you no longer see the TC18. So you can kind of, you, you kind of get into this, into some very cool detail. And you could continue this, you know, get rid of the buy subdomain, maybe the user group, but just kind of see what, what, what does this website consist of? Why so many subdomains? And um, as, as, you, as you kind of go down into this, this, this funnel rabbit hole, you know, you're looking at TC19 and suddenly that attracts your attention. And so at that point you're saying, okay, this, this Tableau conference, let's dig a little deeper. So you can actually do the site command for the subdomain. Is, is this all making sense? Is this? Okay, cool. So you, you, you just do the site command for the subdomain TC19, and then you can see, okay, this is a lot more manageable. 1,580 results, still pretty massive. So this is a conference, one conference, they have 1,580 pages for, that's nuts. And so in terms of competitive intelligence, or in terms of writing content, let's say you're writing a content for Looker and you're focused on like the next, uh, the next Looker conference. And so you want to figure out, hey, what's Tableau doing? What did they do last year? How do we, how do we get that detail of information? Hey, just, you know, here, you know, they got it separated by subdomain and we can really dig deep. So it's, 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 it's just really fun because you can, you can poke around and learn and, and, and really geek out. Um, what what I, what so what I really like is using the site command because it gives you um, it gives you information that a lot of companies don't necessarily want you to see. And so let me let me just use let me just use Amazon as an example. Okay, so if I go to Amazon and I do just the regular internal control search for Wi-Fi range extender, right? This is what you get, right? So Amazon gives you exactly what Amazon wants you to see. This is kind of on the stage, it's not backstage. And so you get best sellers, who cares? Let me just, okay, go past a, another best sellers. Okay, I don't wanna, Amazon's choice. No, I don't, I don't, I don't care. Uh, editorial, no, I don't wanna see that. And then you, you, know, you have to go way down to, to find actual results. And then even there, you don't really know how are they filtered? So let me just go back and look at the alternative because as, as, as you guys know, um, as, as you can guess already, just type site colon amazon.com space. And then even better would be to put this in quotes and you're looking for Wi-Fi range extender and I'll hit enter because it, it just, it's, so then you've got, you're kind of forcing those, those queries together. So you're looking for this one specific uh, phrase. So let's look for a Wi-Fi range extender. And this is exactly, uh, you, you know, this, this, this now is, is, is almost like open source um, information. And you can go into a little more detail. You can go to the tools. You can select any time. Let's just do past month, right? Maybe this is something Amazon doesn't, doesn't want you to see. So in the past month, Wi-Fi range extenders, these are the ones that were added or that were changed on amazon.com. And so the, the, I guess the point I wanna make here is uh, using, using these commands, it's not just for uh, uh, like digital marketing research and content research, but it's something you can use day to day to make your, to make your life easier. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's like, yeah, it's like site search on steroids and so, you know, you, you can, you, you've got the, the, the controlled versus the, the complete data. Um, and you can, so, so let me just, let me just go, uh, uh, so, so, so you got, you have, you have the Forrester uh, result that I was showing you before, but you can also get, and this is, this is a, uh, an interesting result that I got when I was looking at Tableau, um, I was kind of parsing things out and it's always interesting. And I, I don't want to, uh, you know, make sure you, you, you talk to your, your uh, 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 corporate counsel before you do anything like this, but it's, it's often fascinating to search for pricing or fee structure because you would be surprised now and then 
there's actually, there, you know, there could be an Excel spreadsheet or some information on pricing that is not, that they might not necessarily want you to see, such as, uh, you know, like Tableau's new subscription pricing. Now let me click on that and let's see what they've got here. Okay, oh wow, how interesting. Okay, they make you sign in now and this is new. So uh, let me just go back. This is interesting. Now, let, let me just geek out a little more. So Google, for some reason, was able to crawl this page with Tableau's new subscription pricing, but ultimately it couldn't, uh, like if you try to access it, uh, it doesn't let you access it. But so from my perspective, I'm saying, hey, somehow Google crawled this, right? Because there's some content. This is the new pricing model also lowers the cost of entry. So how would you, does anybody have any idea how you could try to bypass that? Well, there's this cool, there's this cool little triangle up here that if you pull that down, it says cash. And so this is the, so let me just click on that. So this is the cached information that Google has on its server that it got the information from originally and it's kind of messy looking because not all the images appear, but you might be able to get, oh, look here, it says personal edition 35, professional edition 70. So there is some pricing, there's Tableau's new subscription pricing that might not be on the website. So basically I've kind of led you through, you know, site colon Tableau and then site colon, oh, we've got the subdomain and then searching for a specific search term and then kind of looking at the cached information that Google indexed. So it's uh, uh, just, just, a, uh, just a, fun, a fun way to, uh, to kind of dig into this. Now, um, you, want, you might want to store your tracing capacity because this, this, is, this is where the fun starts. Uh, so you don't, you don't only, you, 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 the filters you can use, you can actually filter for so what I'm going to do here is site tableau.com space, and then I can use a filter, which is file type colon PDF. And obviously you guys are going, okay, that looks like he's going to be looking for PDFs, all the PDFs on the site tableau.com. And here you go. So for, and, and this is where it's, it's, it's really nice for content because if you're dealing with a B2B, for example, let's say you're writing content, for a company and, and it's in the B2B sector, PDFs are fairly important because PDFs kind of show, you know, uh, uh, I mean, they, they, they're kind of a measure of your thought leadership. In a sense, the more PDFs you've got out there, the more you probably know about a certain topic. And so you can, you know, you can look at how many PDFs and which PDFs are on Tableau, right? And then you can, you can, you can get totally crazy and go to tools and you can say, Instead of any time, you can say, hey, how about the past month? Let's see how that, oh, interesting. So in the past month, they published, and there's some, for some reason, Google doesn't give the number once you break it down into, into specific time frames. but you get, okay, so it's, it's, I'm, I'm guessing it's maybe like 12 or something like that. You get, you get 12 results here of the PDFs that were published in the last month. And then you could, you know, if you're writing content, you can say, hey, you know, Pete, uh, uh, Tableau published these last month. Do you think we should write something like that, for example? And so um, uh, a, a, a couple of more things you can look for. And I mean, these, these are really fun. You could search for a contest, for example. And that's something I noticed that there are, you know, a couple of PDFs that actually focused on contest. So you can filter, you can have a second filter. So basically on the site, Tableau.com, show me all the, the, all, all the PDFs. And on top of that, make sure they all have contest in uh, with, with, within the content somewhere. So these are all the PDFs that deal with their contest. And it's like, you know, you get the official rules, you, you get um, this game's a Singapore contest. So I don't, I don't even wanna, I almost feel like I don't wanna click on these because I don't know if these are do they mean to publicly put these out there or not? But as you can tell, it's, it's, it's really fun. So let's, 
let's go to another search. You can search for artificial intelligence. So how much content, how many PDFs on artificial intelligence have they actually published, right? And so it's 29 that mention artificial intelligence. Um, and you know, another good one is best practices, right? So again, file type, PDF, looking for PDFs that have best practices somewhere um, in, 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 in their, uh, in, in, within those documents. And it's 138. Uh, so let me, let me just zip on here because I'm going to get even more specific because let's say you're looking at those 38 and they mention best practices, but you're a little bit frustrated because it's not, you know, it's, it's not in, in depth enough. So you can use another parameter where you can, uh, specify on within the site tableau oh, okay interesting so nothing comes up here um, but within the site tableau looking for file type PDF and I'm looking in I'm looking for the title best practices specifically and I think yeah oh you know what no I wasn't uh, am I am I actually checking yeah anytime so that's interesting I was checking that yesterday and one and one document came up and it's not coming up anymore so basically what I'm asking here is to have a PDF that in the title actually mentions best practices. So it's, it's, it's a much more in-depth approach. So I know I'm, I'm, I'm getting pretty geeky here, but let's, let's just kind of throw out one more. So it's not just PDFs, but, and this is where it gets exciting, dangerous, um, if it's your own company that you're working for, risky. So that's something you might want to check because you can also look for file types such as doc, doc. So the, the, the older version, you know, the DOC version, the doc X, the newer version, XLS, XLSX, PPT, PowerPoint, et cetera. So I searched for XLSX. Oh yeah. Okay. It, it did come up and oh, so check this out. So there's an Excel spreadsheet on the site, which to me always kind of sounds off warning bells because why in the heck would there be a pub? Because this is publicly available, right? It's on the site Domo in this case, and it's in the file type. Is, so there's an Excel spreadsheet. If I click on this, it'll download this spreadsheet and I'm not gonna do it. Uh, I can, oh, oh, oh this, this is another nice one here. Uh, you, you actually want to repeat uh, search with omitted results because sometimes you'll get 10 or 20 things that Google thought may be repetitive, but in this case, they probably aren't because you're looking specifically. So there are, there are two Excel spreadsheets that they have on their, that they have on their website. Um, I have found, so I'm not going to click on this, but I have found crazy things. I found distributor pricing. I found like internal fee structures, like notes from meetings. So you want to be super careful here. But the thing to remember is somebody wasn't paying attention. So this is not like you're breaking into an office. It's, it's, it's almost like you're just, um, you know, you're viewing something that was shared by the company with Google uh, without a lot of forethought where they thought, oh, let's just, let's just put it on the website and we'll share it with all the distributors. But, oh, wait, we published it to the, the, the public site. And they assume because it's not linked, but Google still found it. And so Google is indexing it. So Google's got it in, in their index. Andreas, we have a question yes. from Tom on searching for file types. Can you search for multiple file types at the same time? Um, wow. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of wondering, like, why would you want to do that? Well, no, no, just to just to get all the Excel's and uh, PowerPoints, etc. Oh, I see. you know, it's, it's funny. I've never done that. But let's just see, because I know. So we know there's an XLSX, and I'll, I'll do, uh, we know they're PDF. So let's, yeah, let's see what happens. Good question. Yeah, often they're, yeah, they're limitations. Okay, and you can't put like an so and, might be, yeah, an and operator or something? What if I just put it next? Yeah, I don't even know. PDF. Yeah, let me just put try and uh, let's do capital so it understands it's actually a search. Huh. Don't you want to do or instead of and? Yeah, you'd want or. Oh, uh -huh. is that working though? Um, 
yeah, it looks like this is PDF, so it could work. Yeah, okay. these are PDFs. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm still not totally sure. I mean, I would always just spend a little, uh, here, I mean, here's what I do. I'll just do XLS, enter. Oh, nothing. Okay. XLS, X, enter. Oh, okay. Here we go. Oh, interesting. Let, let's click on the omitted results. Oh, got two of them. Boom. And then, and then you're done with Excel, right? So I just, I just go step by step. No, okay. interesting question. The, the thing, the thing is there are certain, um, serial, uh, like Boolean file type searches that are allowed certain parameters and others just go wacky. So it's, it's never really clear when Google has stopped allowing those. It just, it just gives you wacky, um, uh, information, wacky data. So just, you know, just do a test and like with this one be easy, right? So you just do one search to the other and then do them together and see, is it, is it, is it really a plus B? in the end yeah yep thank you yep cool question though yeah so uh yeah let me see i, I don't want to uh overburden yeah so i just i mean i just have a, a specific example here so i'm just looking at tenable.com uh again this is a, a company that that measures uh cyber exposure and so if you wanted to as an example look at their competitors again you do tenable versus and it's so uh, what, what I like to do here is always add a space because for some reason that kind of cleans things up and it gives you a little more information and so if, if you're looking for tenables competitors boom here they are right or you could get it get it with that that website uh, uh, that I was that, that I mentioned before uh, so so you get your competitors that way you uh, you know you can you can dive into a competitor like so you've established okay qualis is a competitor so let's see what kind of stuff they published file type pdf boom there you go 1670 of them um, awesome and then you can get more and more specific such as oh uh, let's let's see if, if yeah this this should still work okay there there we go this so here's that example i was trying before that for some reason wasn't working today but it's uh you're looking at qualis.com the file type PDFs, all PDFs. However, you want them to have Forrester in the title because, and let me just see. So if I just look, if I take off that in title and I enter PDF, see, then you get all the PDFs, there are nine of them, where Forrester is mentioned in the, it could be anywhere, title, content, whatever. So just having, having, having the in title um, just specifies um, that this specific search or this specific document is um, uh, 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 much more focused on, um, uh, let me just see here. Yeah, and there, there you go. There, there's the PDF and it, it, it's, 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 it's focused on that, that keyword that you're looking for. Yeah, and by the way, this is the trick that you can use if you want to get certain con gated content without leaving, uh, completing a registration page. Because I'm sure that Forrester it, report is, sits behind a, a landing page. Yes, exactly, exactly. So that it, it doesn't work all the time because if they right. set it up right, there, there's yeah. no way into it. But that, no, that, that's a really good point. And that's, that's something I will, I will uh, try a lot, especially if it's like, a, like an analyst report. And, and what you can do there is just, you know, take the title or sometimes even like the first line of, of, of the content of that report and put in quotation marks and just search for that. Sometimes you'll get, you know, a site that's maybe that's bought it and that's publishing it on their own site. Um, and then you can kind of get around, uh, you can get a little more creative. Uh, yeah, and again, hey, with, with these guys, I did, let, let's see if this, if this comes up again. Yeah, there we go. So. Uh, I, I did a search for uh, all the content on Qualys again. I'm looking for file types, XLS, so Excel spreadsheets, and boom, there's another one. So let me click on this and see if there are any more. Yeah, so they basically have one, two, three, four, five different spreadsheet spreadsheets. And investor relations, you know, could be okay stuff. It could be kind of questionable stuff, but in terms of research, Competitive intelligence—it's—it's—it's it's, it's always good. It's—it's—it's it's, it's always good to be able to to dig that deeply. So we had, we talked about. So let me just kind of kind of finish things off here. We talked about Google Alerts. 
um, because the, the thing I, I realized in as, as I was putting together some of this for uh, a presentation that I did a few years ago, I realized that you can actually, you can take these queries, these searches, these advanced operator searches, and you can embed them into Google Alerts. And so you could create an alert that's Zora um, uh, is a website, uh, site colon Zora. So it basically will tell you, um, you know, the first time you put in the alert, you see, okay, it's, you know, like 4,000 pages, great. But the next time you get the alert, it'll tell you when pages were added to the site. And then you can see which pages, like what, what's the delta, what changed. And so it's a great way of kind of keeping track of competitors and keeping track, especially here, like if you're looking at uh, the PDFs that they're publishing. So you're, you're, you know, this is one of your competitors that you're writing content for, you can kind of keep tabs on them. And then you get an alert and Obviously, the thing to keep in mind is when Google indexes something, it doesn't necessarily mean that they just published it. It could mean that it was published three days ago, four days ago, five days ago. But this is when Google indexes it, sends you an alert, and boom, you can go to you know the the VP of marketing and say, hey, you know this is what this is what these guys are are uh, coming up with and I think we need to we need to be on top of that and write some content. And so you could even look for specific pages such as zora.com case studies, right? So if there's a case studies page, you can check on have an ongoing check on the delta. So they're upgrade they're, they're updating the case studies and boom, you're the first to know and then you can say, "Oh wow, they got they have 17 more case studies. Oh my god, wow, let's check them out and let's see if we need to respond in kind and you know job postings or even even uh, a YouTube channel you, you can you can uh, set set something up to um, identify the changes there so uh, yeah I'd be happy to take questions what, what I'd like to do is kind of round things off what what I've what so what I've given you here is imagine um, imagine going to a website and you see exactly what a uh, a company wants you to see so it's like seeing what's happening on stage but by having these tools you can you can go beyond that and you can see all of the stuff that's taking place behind stage the things that they don't necessarily want you to be aware of i mean even little things like oh my god fifteen thousand pages what the heck is on those pages um and and like if, if i mean if you're writing content and you know that the company you're writing content for they got 10 PDFs and they're saying, no, 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 we don't have any, any budget for that. Just do a search on three competitors. And if you could say, dude, they, these guys have, you know, a thousand um, pieces of content and they're coming out with four new ones a month, right? How do you know that? Oh, I'm using these, using these tools here. So it's kind of peaking backstage. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, oh, I, I'd like to, I'd like to uh, pass along a uh if, if if you guys are interested in a discount code i i partner or my company partners with another company called press synergy and i know i've mentioned initially that the press releases are taken more seriously i don't know if any of of you write press releases or get involved in that at all but this is a very interesting company to work with because of their syndication practices they understand how to integrate how to truly integrate seo with their syndication and i think they only right i know, I know they want to go up with their pricing they only charge you it's like 90 dollars per press release so it's a really good deal so if you do press releases check out press synergy and i have a discount code if, you, if you're interested um let me know and i can i can pass that along so that's 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 pretty much it any any, any questions hope i didn't go too long here so andres on the discount code should they just email you if they're interested yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 Excellent. And I'll, I'll pass that along. Yep. Yep. So it's a 10%, it. it's a 10% discount. And if, if you do press releases, so, so what we're trying to do at Blue Fusion at, at my company, uh, we're trying to encourage clients to come out with a monthly press release and really to think it through and, 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 and to have, um, you know, a, a really a unique message in each of those press releases. 
And it just means that, so, so press releases are interesting because they don't live forever because you publish them. And, and, and what I mean by that is, is in, in the Google index. So you publish them and they might be around for, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six months. And then they so slowly because, you know, they're time sensitive, right? So it doesn't make sense for Google to focus on a press release from 2004. Um, but but uh, we have found that press releases can really help you in your SEO efforts in parallel to content building, obviously. So yeah, it's a, a, a cool uh, a cool service. Excellent. We do have time for one or two questions. You could folks yes. can uh, feel free to unmute yourself or use the chat. I will start with a question. So you had Andreas a lot of great Google tips, and this could be a topic of a whole separate talk. But do you have a quick tip right. for us on? doing competitive intelligence using social media? Um, yeah, social media, we're not that strong on. We focus mostly on SEO and SEM, but the other, the other tool that we use is SEM Rush. I think that's, that's probably the top tool. I really okay. like that. I don't know what the cost is. I mean, it's not super expensive. It's not super cheap either. I'm guessing maybe 50 bucks a month or hundred bucks a month, but SEM Rush is a really, really good tool. Yeah. And you're using that for Competitive intelligence specifically? I use that for competitive SEO? intelligence. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 Got it. yeah. And it's, it's, it, it shows you SEO data. It shows you paid search data. It's, it's really nice from, especially from a paid search perspective, because you can get somewhat of a feeling of what competitors are spending. And then you can go back to management. You can say, hey, these guys are investing. You know, I, I mean, some, some companies are crazy amounts. You know, $200,000 a month on Google ads don't you think we should do something too right so from that from that right. perspective yeah got it well the Maybe. other thing i really like is that you can uh, on the organic side so on the uh, seo side uh they might they make it really easy to uh, give a value to establish a value for organic traffic because a lot of the time you just assume that, oh, organ you know, organic, tra organic traffic, natural traffic, it's all free, but it's not because it represents something. So if you were to turn off that traffic, what would you need to spend on Google ads to make that up? And you know, some sites are like, you know, they could be, the traffic value could be hundreds of thousands of dollars a month. And especially looking at competitors, you can say, hey, you know, we're worth, a thousand bucks a month. These guys are worth, you know, forty thousand dollars a month. You know, let's. We need to be more active on the SEO side, instead of instead okay. of kind of the binary. Hey, we need to do SEO. Oh, what does that mean? Oh, no, no, not interested. Yeah. Got it. Last call for questions for Andreas. Uh, I have one question. Um, yes, please. Earlier when yeah. you were at the answerthepublic.com, you said yep. uh, VPN to bypass something. Yes. Um, what does VPN mean? Oh, VPN. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a virtual, what the, what the hell does it stand for? Vir, oh, virtual private vir, network. Virtual private network. And it's a way, um, it, it's just a way to buy, it's kind of a sneaky way to get them. So, so basically you log in, you get yeah. their data. They know where you're, where you're uh, busy logging in from. And then if you have the VPN changes, so it looks like you're logging in from France, you get a fresh start. So you can do another maybe three queries. So that's, that's, that's kind of a way around that, that limitation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Um, you I think Lisa, well. Love yeah. it. If you, if you search like VPN software, I think there's some free software that you just download to your computer. Yeah, oh. exactly. I use ex I use ExpressVPN just because it works it works really well. I so I really enjoy watching uh, TV shows that you can only get let's say in Germany or in France, and oh. it's 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 a great way to kind of trick let's say Netflix to think oh he's coming from Germany and then I can see German shows that you would not get in the U.S. even on Netflix. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So Ex Express VPN works really well for that. You, and I think you can just test it for, you know, for a few days, just kind of see what you think. Yeah, that's really cool because um, I learned a little bit of Vietnamese, just a little bit, not uh, too. But having uh, some Netflix shows and that, that'd be cool. There yeah. you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, Andres, thank you for your time today. That was really interesting. A lot of the 
tips and tricks that we can all use. And for everyone in the audience, especially, the, I mean, for those of us in the US, uh, have a great July 4th weekend. And uh, we'll awesome. have more meetups going next week. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thank, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> thank Bye. you. Bye, you guys. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. See you, Esther. Bye.